In the previous lecture, we discussed electric density and drift velocity. Now we're going to apply those concepts into the following example. Suppose a certain copper wire with a diameter of 4 millimeters carries an electric current of 6 amps. Assume the density of copper is 8.9 times 10 to the 3 kilograms per meter cubed and the atomic mass of copper is 63.5 grams per mole. So in part A, calculate the electric density given by J and in part B, calculate the drift velocity of our electrons given by V subscript D. So let's begin with part A. So we're essentially taking a section of of our copper wire as shown. Now the copper wire is assumed to be cylindrical in shape so the cross-sectional area is given by pi r squared where r is our radius so it's half of our diameter. So to find our electric density of our electrons we essentially want to use the following equation that we were able to show in the previous lecture. So we said that J the electron density is equal to the ratio of the electric current I divided by our area. So in this case the area is given by pi r squared. Now the r is simply half of this so it's 0 0.002 meters and the I is given to be 6 amps. So 6 amps divided by pi multiplied by the square of 0 0.002 gives us about 4.77 times 10 to the 5 amps per meter squared. So this is the magnitude of our electric density and it points in the same direction as our electric field. So if this is our higher potential given by positive and this is our lower potential given by negative, the electric field points in this direction. Now, let's move on to part B. Calculate the drift velocity of our electrons given by V subscript D. Now, in the previous lecture, we were able to build a relationship between the electric density and the drift velocity, so we were able to derive the following equation. We said that the electric density J is equal to negative of the product of the electron density N multiplied by the charge on one electron given by QE multiplied by the drift velocity given by V subscript D. So we take this equation, rearrange it, and solve for our velocity. The drift velocity is equal to negative of our electric density J divided by N multiplied by the charge of our electron QE. Now we know what the J is, that was calculated in part A. We know what the charge on one electron is, that's simply 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs. That's a constant. So if we calculate what the N is, what the electron density is within our wire, we can calculate what the drift velocity is. So let's examine this part. Now what exactly is the value of N? So by definition our electron density given by N is equal to the quantity of electrons, the number of free electrons within a section of the wire multiplied by the volume. So for example if, we're, if we want to calculate the N in this section we simply count up the number of free electrons in this area and divide it by this entire volume and that gives us the electron density given by n. Now if we make the assumption that each copper atom has only one free electron then the density of the electrons given by n is the same exact value as the density of the copper atom. So we have one free electron per each copper atom. So our n becomes the number of copper atoms given by uppercase n divided by the volume given by uppercase v. So let's recall what the definition of density is. Density is equal to mass divided by the volume. So we can take this equation, rearrange it, and solve for our volume. We see the volume is equal to the mass 
divided by our density. So now let's take this equation, n is equal to uppercase n divided by v, and let's replace our volume with mass divided by density. So we see that n, our electron density or atom density, is equal to the product of our density given by rho multiplied by n, uppercase n, the number of atoms divided by the mass. So let's suppose we take a chunk of our wire which contains 63.5 grams of copper. So we know that this quantity of mass of copper represents one mole of copper atoms. And there are this many atoms within one mole of copper atoms. So 6.02 times 10 to 23 atoms. This is known as Avogadro's number. So we see that the n lowercase n becomes our density of copper atoms 8.9 times 10 to the 3 kilograms per meter cubed multiplied by the number of electrons so the number of atoms and since each electron has one or each atom has one free electron this is also equal to the number of electrons so 6.02 times 10 to the 23 electrons divided by the mass of our copper that we're examining 0.06 635 kilograms. So we take this and convert it into kilograms from grams. We plug this into our calculator and we get 8.4 times 10 to the 28 meters to the negative 3. So this is our electron density. So it's actually our atom density, but because each atom has one free electron by assumption, this is also our electron density. So, now we know what the J is, we know what our electric charge is on one electron, and we know what our electron density is. So, the drift velocity becomes negative of this value obtained from part A, divided by our N value, multiplied by our uh, quantity of charge on one electron. So, 3.55 times 10 to the negative 5 meters per second is the drift velocity of our electrons within our copper wire.